This conference will now be recorded. Before we share the bread and wine in remembrance of our Saviour, it is uh, important that we be encouraged and exhorted. And this morning, our brother Dan Walton has prepared his heart to exhort us. Good morning. Now, last week, we had an exhort on the theme of waiting by Brother Rees. And you know the examples of Isaac and Rebecca, which I found was quite interesting, in that it brought up the point that instead of waiting for God's word to be fulfilled, they took it into their own hearts. They deceived Isaac for the blessing, and there was a the sad story of Saul, and when I look at a story, I just feel sad, who didn't wait for Samuel and he lost his faith in God. And the, the main lesson that I, I took from that is that there's no shortcuts to waiting. Um, I've always been impressed by the steadfast faith of Jeremiah. I remember a series of talks some years back and just what he went through and how he just stood solid like a rock. And he continued to preach for 48 years, 48 years in the face of oppression, day, oppression and persecution, day in and day out. Then there's the, the Apostle Paul also who suffered much, but we hear how he rejoiced that he could suffer for Christ. These people are all examples for us, and we have much to learn from their steadfast faith. It can be hard to wait. You know, when you go there that on a dentist visit and you're sitting there, and ah, uh, no, sadly enough, we've got phones, but before you're sitting there, before phones, I guess, the real world, you sit there and you're looking around and you, you see the paint and the cracks and this and that, or when you're in the chair and you know he's going to come in, and time seems to stand still. It seems to take so much longer. When it may seem like it's taking too long, that's the time where we may think we're losing our path. We may forget the path or lose our faith or we keep attending, but we just go through the motions because we don't know what else to do. We need to look at the examples. I mentioned Jeremiah and Paul and know that it was harder for them. We saw what Paul went through, all the beatings and thrashings, but he just kept on going. Endurance, endurance is the key. We all need in, endurance in our run to the kingdom. Um, and the reason why we, we see here in, in the quote there from Luke, be on your guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with uh, precipitation and drunkenness and worries of this life. And the day close down upon you suddenly, like a trap. For it will overtake all who live on the face of this whole earth. But stay alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that must happen to stand and to stand before the Son of Man. So Jesus was talking to his disciples. There were some immediate things that was going to happen to them. But it, it does also apply to us as well. The runners that do the 100 meter sprint, they can run very fast and they can look very impressive, but they will have issues running a marathon. It's not how fast we get to the kingdom, it's that we get there. That's the important thing. 
we don't know how long the path is. So we don't, we shouldn't be operating, operating like a hundred meter runner. We need to be working from the mindset of someone running a marathon. What we do know is that we want to be there and we want to be part of it. Put the parable of the 10 virgins. And this is the story, this story directly applies to us today. I'll read it. At the time of the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of the virgins are foolish and five are wise. When the foolish ones took their lamps, they did not take extra olive oil with them. But the wise ones took flasks of olive oil with their lamps. When the bridegroom was delayed a long time, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, the bridegroom is here. Come out to meet him. And then all the virgins woke up. They trimmed their lamps and the foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there won't be enough for you and for us. Go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourself. But while they went to, to buy it, the bridegroom arrived and those who were ready went inside with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the other virgins came too, saying, Lord, Lord, let us in. But he, requi he replied, I tell you the truth, I do not know you. Therefore, stay alert. You do not know the day or the hour. So it's not like a short thing. We don't know the time. So we need to be consistent. We need to be prepared for any time. We want our faith to be, we, we need to be like the five wise virgins. We need to be prepared. We need to keep our faith strong. And we probably need a little bit of backup there because you don't know what's going to happen. We all have the opportunity for life eternal through the relationship we have through God, through baptism. And it's all down to our choices. So often things happen in life. Someone says something or, or all sorts of things happen. But our our salvation is between us and God, and us and God only, no one else. You can't blame anyone else. Now, it's easy to begin something, but it's harder to often keep on doing it. It's easy to start university, but to keep doing all the boring homework or whatever, it can be, can be harder. Five of the virgins didn't have enough oil. They believed and when they turned up, they thought they had enough, but they didn't. We're here because we've confessed that we believe and we've been baptized. And what we need to do is like the wise, the wise virgins is to keep our faith, to have enough oil in our storage. We have this quote here, where it talks about the Pharisees, that some of the Pharisees believed but they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. So it's, it's easy to have things that, that get in the way, that maybe other motivators to keep us, to, to, to sidetrack us. We have many examples in the Bible of people who have strong faith. And we looked at often their lives weren't easy. They struggled, they made mistakes. But the important thing is that they kept going. Um, Hebrews 11, verse 32, and what more shall I say? For the time would fail to tell me of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of strangers. When we read about the story of Daniel, 
Do you ever hear that Daniel was told that he wasn't going to be eaten by the lions? I don't recall hearing that. The poor fellow was probably going to throw in there, but I'm not, I'm not going to change. I, I'm going to pray to God and God only. And the lions didn't eat him. I'm sure he was just as surprised as the lions were. <laughs> These are our brothers and sisters. And they believed. And, and many of the times when the majority around them didn't. Even less believe today. Uh, we don't have prophets at this time doing great and wonderful wonders. But we do see the growth of evil and godlessness in the world. And we see God's hand moving among the nations. And so recognizing this, we need to maintain ourselves in the love of God. I'll read from Jude. It says, But you, dear friends, recall the predictions foretold by the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. For they said to you, at the end time, they will become scoffers, propelled by their own ungodly desires. These people are divisive, worldly, devoid of the spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith, by praying in the Holy Spirit, maintain yourselves in the love of God. And that's what we're here for today, is to maintain ourselves in the love of God while anticipating the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that brings eternal life. And so we're here today as we know that the kingdom is coming and we're here to maintain ourselves, to strengthen each other and to preach of the coming kingdom, knowing that it is coming soon. There's a story about the race between the rabbit and the turtle. And the lesson there is the consistency is most important. We must keep strong and keep walking the road to the kingdom one step at a time. It's, we can't blame anyone else for our mistakes. And we need to have this attitude. But when these things begin to happen, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And this is the way we need to be looking at things in this world. The signs that are times are becoming all the more frequent. We've seen all the fear before the, the time of COVID and how people were absolutely terrified and forced to do all sorts of things. We need to take this as encouragement. Encouragement that the end of the race is coming and that we need to be ever more vigilant. And you think of when you had a long, long run at school or whatever, and you could see the head, you'd been running, you were tired, and you need to pick up the pace, just that extra bit more. That's where we are. We need to pick up our efforts. We need to refresh ourselves and increase our efforts even more because we don't know what may happen. For everyone that's a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man studying his natural face in a mirror. For he studied himself and went on his way and immediately forgot what he was like. It can be very easy to examine ourselves on the Sunday, see things for improvement, and after leaving, forget completely what we saw and come back the next Sunday and, oh, that's right. Well, oh, yeah, I should be doing this. It's, 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 it's just a challenge. James says, but the one who peers into the perfect law of liberty and fixes his attention there and does not become a forgetful listener, but one who lives it out, he will be blessed in what he does. So we can't be forgetful. We need to remember during the week as well to examine ourselves we need to work to improve. We need to be like Olympians, looking for little things we can keep improving on. And that's why we're here today, to refresh our faith, to refuel our lamps, and then do. John says, little children, let us not love of word or with tongue, 
but in deed and truth. And by this, we will know that we are of the truth and we will convince our conscience in his presence. Faith involves believing and then showing that belief by showing God's love to others. Love is putting into action. It's easy to do the motions, but to really do and to show love to all, that is hard. We have to make sure that we continue to do what we have promised, to continue to do God's will. We read here in John 3.16, for this is the way God loved the world. He gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world should be saved through him. God showed us his love through his son's death. And we're here to remember that sacrifice. Paul in Galatians 5 talks about when you live by the spirit, you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. And that the, the flesh is desires that are opposed to the spirit. And they're in opposition. And so we have to, with patience and perseverance, we need to be continuing in the ways of the fruits of the Spirit. We need to be continually evaluating our performance. When we show a lack of patience or get angry or something, we need to look to kind of correct those sorts of things. Part of remembering Christ's sacrifice is appraising our own sacrifice and performance and working more and more to be like Christ, our Lord and Master. We're here today to remember our Lord and Master. He died to provide a way for us to wash away our sins. Soon our wait will be over. Soon. But until then, we need to be prepared. We need to be able to endure until Christ returns. We're in this for the long haul. We have the words from Paul in 2 Timothy 4, verse 6, where he says, For I am already being poured out as an offering, and the time for me to depart is at hand. I have completed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, the crown of righteousness is reserved for me. The Lord, the righteous judge, will award it to me in that day and not to me only, but to also all of us who have set our affection on his appearing. We're still in the race. We have our examples, and we're helping each other, striving towards the kingdom. It says here, we, since we have a high priest who has passed through the heavens, verse 15, for we do not have a high priest incapable of sympathizing with her weaknesses, one who is tempted in every way just as we are, yet without sin. And we have to remember that. Jesus was tempted in every way, that we have, but, but more. He, can, he sympathizes. He knows the troubles we have go, gone through and go through. We should be praying for him. We'll continue praying to him so that we can confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and find grace whenever we need help. I have John's words, sorry, Paul's words in 1 Corinthians. And I love this example, the, the idea of the race. Do you know that in a race that all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way to get the prize. And that's what we have to do. Everyone who competes in a race goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, don't run like someone running aimlessly. I'm just changing his words slightly. 
And don't fight by someone beating a boxer beating the air. Paul says, I will strike a body, blow to my body and make it my slave. So after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. So the, the prize. And so we need to make sure our body, our flesh is our slave and not our master. And I'll finish with Paul's words from Hebrews 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great crowd, cloud of witnesses, we must get rid of every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And we must run with endurance the race set out for us. We need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set out for him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. And we're here to take of his love, to take that joy into our hearts, so in our lives we are joyous and aspiring to be with him on that day. Thank you.